the good news is, is I have a definitive voice on a crucial issue to tell you about. You know, we don't always get definitive voices. We get these things that say, well, maybe. But I have a definitive voice. And that voice, her voice, Sister Jean's voice, says that, the, that God likes NCAA basketball more than the NBA. <laughs> In case you didn't know, Sister Jean is the 92-year-old chaplain for the Loyola Chicago basketball team that lost yesterday. They were the Cinderella in this year's tournament, and they made it amazing. They, they um, brought miracles to that. And um, she moved Grant Hill, one of the best basketball players ever in, in NCAA history, to say, that he's learned not to go against Sister G. <laughs> because, let me tell you, that there's power when a woman speaks. Amen. <laughs> and sometimes we forget that in our world, which is too dominated by male voices. But Jürgen Moltmann, a great theologian from, from last century, said this, Without women preachers, we would have no knowledge of the resurrection. Do you know what he meant by that? He meant that Mary Magdalene went and spoke about what she saw. And Salome went and spoke about what she saw. And the other Mary went and spoke. And a lot of people looked at him and said, oh, I don't think so. And they spoke with power and with patience and they told people what they had seen and today because of that courage to speak something way out of the ordinary we are here St. Francis is here Jim is here because someone chose to speak and here's the hard part about that Someone will always tell you to be quiet. Have you noticed that? Someone will always tell you, I don't want to hear that story. That's not the way it works. That's, that's not the right thing to say or be or do. Bill O'Reilly said this. The big question is, should the media be promoting opinions by teenagers who are in an emotional state and facing extreme peer pressure in some cases, to which Denzik and Jones spoke back. And you may not know Denzik and Jones, but um, he goes by the tagline, Mr. Film Critic. No way I know him. <laughs> he said, teenagers are old enough to have assault weapons, but not opinions. And they are old enough to have opinions. But people are attacking those teenagers right now for speaking. Have you seen that this week? Emma got looked at in several different ways and told to shut up. She was, she was shown tearing the Constitution in half, which wasn't true. Laura Ingram told that young man to shut up, laughed at him. Yet, they kept speaking. They keep speaking, and we need to speak as well. Isn't it amazing what they have taught us? Vincent and Jones went on to say, I've always wished that the whole world would be more like Harry Potter. <laughs> they said, but when I said that, I meant the teleportation and the magic stuff. Not the entire plot of Book 5, where the government refuses to do anything about the deadly threat so that the teenagers have to stand up and rise and fight back. And our teenagers are fighting back. They are speaking a truth that sometimes we've been afraid to speak. They are saying what we say is true here, that God is alive. And people are saying, but I don't want to hear him. And we need to reinforce that hearing in ourselves and in our world. It is time for us to hear what it is they're saying, what God is saying through them. But even our scripture for today from Mark shows how even those gospel writers can get it wrong. I don't know if you noticed the first scripture that we 
that, that we read. Did you see how it ended? It said they were so afraid that they did not tell anyone. Those three women who saw that body first, I mean, that, 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 that empty tomb first, were so afraid they saw, they told no one. That's the male bias happening, because it couldn't be women that the first saw. And, you know, to be fair, Mark was pretty pessimistic as a general rule about the, all the disciples, not just the women, but the men as well. He tended to look at them and say, they'll never have enough faith. They'll never do enough. They, they just don't understand this. And continually showed their doubts and uncertainty. But somebody knew better. S several somebodies, I think. Because what happened in Mark is that there were two pieces, at least, that were added into that scripture. If you look in a Bible, you'll often see them called the shorter ending of Mark and the longer ending of Mark. And both those are added on spaces. That shorter ending of Mark said, well, geez, you know, if, if, if they never went and told anyone, if they were too afraid, then, then um, how do we know? And so it said, well, they went and briefly told the disciples, and, and, and then Jesus proclaimed it all over the world. That's the shorter in you, in short. <laughs> and it said, well, it's got to be. But the longer ending went further. The longer ending went on and said, they told, and they didn't quite believe. And they told, and they didn't quite believe. And they told, and they told, and they kept speaking. They went out from that space where something happened that was so outside of the story that people didn't want to hear, didn't know how to hear. And they kept speaking. Have you guys ever had somebody not quite hear your voice? Not quite hear your story? Maybe even be opposed to that story? There will always be opposition. There will always be someone who isn't ready, who doesn't want to hear, who will actively oppose you. But William Sloan Coffin once said, Jesus knew that love your enemies didn't mean don't make any. <laughs> speak your truth is what he's saying. You have to boldly speak what it is that is happening. Those women had to continue to speak the truth that even those people who had followed Jesus throughout his time didn't want to hear. And you know why? Because that's not the way things work, right? When someone dies, they die. And hear these women saying, but he's still alive in us, for us, with us. And so they said, no, 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 wait, no. But they kept speaking. And because they kept speaking, this world was changed. So what's telling you to shut up? What's telling you not to speak any longer? Carol Gilligan did a study a number of years ago where she asked a question and she got back three different answers. Yes, or three different types of answers, I should say. Yes, no, and yes. The first yes was one that said, yes, and you can't make me believe any other way. The question was this, does a woman have the right to have an abortion? And so they said, yes, and you can't make me think any other way. The second one was, no, all the rules, all the laws, all the whatever say no. And the third one was, let's think about it, and I think, yes, there's a reason why. Those are all important answers because we tend to sit in one of these two, either the yes or the no, which is a space of saying, essentially, I don't have to think about it any longer, and you can't change my opinion. Either, yes, I'm right, or no, you're wrong. But this over here says, let's think. Let's move and find the right answer of moving forward together. 
of understanding somehow in that space. And neither this yes nor this no is good enough. Here's why. This doesn't move at all. I'm already stuck. And this no only reacts to that yes and say, you're wrong. But here's the bad part, you have to understand this, is this no also looks at the third yes and thinks it's the same as the first yes. And says, you're wrong because, because you're different than me. But this no needs to be invited into the conversation. It needs to be brought back into speaking and hearing and listening so that they can move beyond. Because here's one of the truths about the Gilligan study is that once someone moved, they didn't move backwards. We want to draw people forward towards what can be, not make them sit in some space of separation, of alienation. That's the space we're in. How do we draw people forward towards? Well, the answer is simple. Relationship. It's speaking to them in the place where they're at, being with them in the midst of the death they're feeling, helping them to see that even when it seems like it's impossible, that the miracle of what this day means might be true. That new life can happen even in this moment when it feels like death just happened. That's this day, isn't it? That what seems to be true isn't true. Something else might be. That God is still alive. That God is still active. That God is still drawing us towards something. And the more we see the opposition to each other, especially in Ken Wilber's terms, when we turn that other person into an it, that we can fight against instead of a, a me that I relate to. The more we do that, the more we hit the dynamic of the first yes and the first no. Instead of stepping into that space where we open our hearts to the he is risen for all of us. But that takes us courageously gathering together coming back to the table again and again and saying that no matter how much you hurt my feelings, how much you told me it's not true, I'm going to proclaim the truth that I have experienced. Those women continued to speak, even when the disciples, those followers of Jesus said, I don't think so. They spoke, they proclaimed, Christ is risen. It takes a long time to do that. We often go to that longer story of John because everything works out there much easier on this day. But Mark is about a harder story about being courageous and accepting that somebody like those women at the tomb can speak into the male-dominated discipleship and hearing that something more can happen. So let me tell you about a wonderful place where, where she went out and spoke. I, I watched a movie this week called Dolores. So it's about Dolores Huerta. And she was an amazing voice. She had every reason to be quiet. She had every reason to steal her voice and hide away. She had 11 kids. That was enough to keep anybody busy, wouldn't it be? But in the midst of all those kids, she continued to speak what God had placed on her heart. She, she continued to speak in a space that was very male-dominated. She was the only one on the board of the United Farm Workers who was of her gender. And she continued to speak and be present in that space and draw in not just those of her gender, but all farm workers. And it gave, her, it gave that organization a vibrancy that it didn't have without her. And one, um, one who knew her said, what was it that she did? 
And they said, what first comes to mind is what Dolores modeled, to go out and meet new people and make those connections. This is about a struggle for justice. And because of that, through that great boycott and all the other things that the farm, the farm workers did, they changed the world. She spoke and people listened, well, after a while. But nevertheless, she persisted. And she kept speaking. She kept helping people to hear. She kept drawing people into the conversation and saying, is there something else that should be heard? And her daughter, uh, Mary Elena Chavez, said this, we're, gonna, we're never going to change if folks keep their place and stay quiet. Especially women, especially Latinas. If we do not speak, if we do not let that voice of God continue to speak into this world, this world will stay in a space of brokenness. We need to speak and speak loud. Dolores said it this way, say your ideas, put lights around it, beat the drum, put it in writing, put your name on it. All that a person has is his or her story, who they are, what they've gone through, what their family has gone through. When we deny someone their story, we take away their power. And so don't just speak, listen to the stories that are going on around you. Hear what it is that other people are speaking. Hear that voice of how God is present and alive in them so that they can hear how God is present and alive in you. We're here because a certain number of women spoke. We're here because people have continued to speak and continue to share that message of this day. It is our job now to continue to speak that. Who today, how today, are we going to say God is still alive in this place, in this city, in this country? The Gospel of Thomas, the same Gospel, says this. When you give rise to that which is within you, what you have will save you. If you do not give rise to it, then what you do not have will save you destroy you. God places something in each one of us. Some song to sing, some, some story to tell, some way to be able to speak out. And it may all come back down to the same story, but it's important that you hear how it is that God needs you to speak. Encourage each other and do it with enthusiasm. You know, those two words are really important. Encourage means with heart. Enthusiasm, you know what it means? In God. So do those two things. Continue to speak enthusiastically how God has spoken through you. And together we will build a beautiful city. As God spells things. City not of some things but of what is really, truly needed. It's been wonderful for my old teacher heart to see how teachers are finding their voices once again. Have you notice that? I love that red for red and how they are making legislators begin to change, begin to hear, begin to move. And so I love the story that I found out about just this week. It's been going on for about two years, but it reached a culmination this week, and I wanted to share because I think it tells me what happens when people persist. It starts with a man named Stephen Colbert. You might have heard of him. <laughs> Stephen sits on the, the board of an of a, um, organization called Donors Choose, which essentially anybody can put something on that space that says, I need this, and I need such and such an amount of money to be able to do it. And then donors can come in and say, I'll fund this or that, or I'll give so much money for that. And, and so he, two years ago, spoke up and said, I'm going to look at all those things from teachers in the state of South Carolina, and I'm going to pay for them. That's kind of cool, isn't it? And then he marshaled the forces of other people, and about um, a little over 50 people stood up, 
and together they, they um, paid $14 million to be able to pay all of those, uh, as much as they could, a year ago. But this week, Ripple, a company, stepped forward with $29 million to pay every single request by every single teacher on that site. It was 20, 20, no, 35,647 requests from 16,561 public schools. Those teachers were heard because they spoke, they persisted, and they finally were listened to. Speak. Speak the message of how God is alive in you. A lot of people won't listen much of the time. They'll forget it or they'll, they'll slip right past it. But don't stop speaking. God is alive in you and through you. Don't ever stop speaking. Because in that speaking, sometimes miracles will come about just like that out of the blue. I love that what we celebrate up here are women things. The baking of bread traditionally has been done not by men, we're not very good at cooking, but by women who love us enough to do it. Juice, which takes a lot of hard work to get from those grapes that are growing to that which we can drink. And we forget that it takes a lot to be able to say that meal will never end. So I brought a little extra juice to remind you. I often focus on the bread because here's a loaf and it's done, it's finished. But a cup floweth over. And so let's just put a little more. And a little more. And a little more. Because that's what the feminine tells us. That it will never, ever run away. One of the things we're beginning to do just this month, you might have noticed these boxes up here, is your Stephen ministers are going to bring communion to those folks that are homebound in some way or another. That haven't got a way to be able to come to us and we're going to let that love of God flow from us into those spaces. That's what I want you to decide. As you come up and, and receive the communion, is think how is it that that communion is going to flow through you, flow out there into something, into somebody, into some space where someone needs it. How will it flow? How will you continue this cup overflowing? God is at work. Let that love flow through you. Will my servers please come forward?